Hello and thanks for joining me today. I think I have too much time in the house lately and my imagination is running a little bit crazy. I thought what if all the creatures in the sea found a sunken treasure chest and decided to all take part of it. So I made this fun and whimsical card depicting just that. The crazy little crab ran away with the lock and key, leaving the trunk open for everybody to come and help themselves. This card is for the May 2020 Karen Berniston Designer Challenge, and our theme is treasure. I used parts and pieces from several different die sets to create my underwater scene. I have a lot of details to share with you, so let's get started. I found the perfect paper in my stash with a nautical theme on the outside and solid on the inside for my five and a half inch square card, which I cut 11 by five and a half with a center crease. For the pop-up portion of my card, I used the hard pivot panel cut from acetate. I found and covered all the tabs with a strong adhesive. You could use any kind of tape for this. I happen to have Elizabeth Crafts double-sided adhesive, so that's what I'm using. After finding all the creases, as you would with any other pivot panel, I lined up the center with the center of the card and held it down with some low-tack tape. With that in place, I'm simply going to remove the liner from the back of the tape and adhere the panel to the card. The difference here is that I am not folding the tabs under. I'm putting them flat. Since it is acetate, it's going to show either way, and this is a lot easier. The acetate that I'm using is the same that teachers use for overhead projectors, or I should say, used to use. This material is strong, lightweight, and easy to cut with a wafer-thin die. I worked my way all the way around the card, connecting each tab. Since the tab is on the outside instead of tucked under, you need to be careful not to grab any of the parts that you want to pop up, otherwise your card isn't going to work. If you don't have double-sided tape, you can also use a clear glue. Just be sure that it works with non-porous surfaces. With my panel adhered to the card, I'm going to work the pivot panel, just same as you would any other pivot, and then I'm going to give it a good press on both sides. I know it's very hard for you to see. I hope you can see it on the camera. I've already cut and assembled the pieces that I plan to use for my card, starting with those cute little crabs. You can see the little guy's got the lock and key ready to swim away. Next we have the octopus, all dressed up in her crown and jewels. Of course we have to have the treasure chest. How else are they going to find all the goodies? The treasure chest die set includes a lot of goodies, including a gold necklace and gold coins to go in your trunk as well as detailed bands to go around the top and bottom. And there is also piles of sand. We all need that. I made the bottom of my ocean by using the outdoor scenes. I just simply cut off the trees, put a little brown ink, and voila, you have sand. I also cut out some grommets using the flap and closure die. I wanted to use them as bubbles, but as it turned out, I didn't need them. Next we have our adorable little mermaids, all dressed up in their jewels. Of course we need an anchor to put by our trunk, and then our little shark, who's running away with a diamond ring. Next is the trophy, followed by some gold coins. The coin has a wonderful embossed feature, makes it look real. The small coin is from the center of the diamond ring. I liked it, so I'm going to use that. To finish my scene, I needed some tropical fish, so I used the fish from the Camping Charms die set, cut them out of different colors, including gold. With all that done, let's start assembling our card. I'm going to start with the ocean bottom, and I'm going to add glue to my card base only along the bottom line. That way, if I want to add some elements tucked into the sand later, it's still loose. I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. Okay, let's add our treasure chest next. I'm going to take the bottom portion that already has the gold in it. I'm going to lay it on my card with the edge hanging off. I like the way this looks. Not everything that you create has to have the whole item on the card. I'm going to add the lid next, leaving it slightly askew. 
so that all the gold coins can show and the critters can get in there and get their... Now turning the card over, I'm going to trim off the part of the treasure chest that hangs over the edge. With the treasure chest in place, I'm simply going to continue to add all the pieces that I've previously prepared. I've used several kinds of adhesives today. Some of it is liquid glue, some is double-sided tape, and the ever-popular glue dots. I'm going to add the large crab next, and since I'm adhering him to the card base, I'm going to use liquid glue on his body, but I haven't put any on his claws because I want to add a gold coin. The coin has double-sided tape on the back of it, so it will hold the claws down once I get the coin in place. I added the anchor next and somehow managed to get the small crab added to the card off camera. The little guy had a catch point on the acetate around his legs, so I trimmed off the acetate. Since it's clear, you can't see it anyway, and it folds up nicely. Next comes one of our little mermaids. Here comes that sneaky little shark with the diamond ring. All of the tropical fish have double-sided tape on the back, so I'm simply going to stick them down on the acetate. I like to give my cards a test every now and then, just to make sure that everything is working properly. Seems that everything is okay so far. I like using glue dots on non-porous surfaces, which reminds me of a funny story. In our motor coach, we have a desk in the corner that I wanted to have a lamp on. However, I was too lazy to put the lamp away every night when we wanted to travel. So I stuck the lamp to the desk with glue dots. And several thousand miles and a few years later, that lamp is still riding around on the desk. When placing elements on your card, you need to be careful not to put it in the crease, which I did right here. So I'm going to have to peel that little fish up and move him. Okay, so far so good. Time for a little test run. We need to fold it up and see what happens. Now you're going to see that when I open the card, some things are stuck together. And that's because we have exposed glue on some of the pieces. I'm going to show you how to fix that. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. This is actually a pretty easy fix. I went and got a container from my craft room that contains baby powder. You really don't need very much. Just dip your finger in the baby powder and rub it on the back of your pieces wherever you feel that exposed adhesive. Baby powder will cover the glue and eliminate the stick. If you get overzealous, the baby powder is going to cloud up your acetate and then you're going to create a new problem having to clean that off. Now that everything seems to be working properly, let's take care of the front of the card. I used the two largest squares from the square crosshatch to make a front panel. Next, I used the new pattern plate swirls to make some ocean waves. I simply glued it on my panel, and then I'm going to trim off the excess. With the waves all securely in place, I cut out some words using a couple different dies. I didn't have a die that said C's, so I made that with my scan and cut. That could also be accomplished by using an alphabet set or perhaps even a stamp. Once I adhered the words to my card, I cut out another little crab, used him on the top of the wave, and I also had a little goldfish left over, so I used him as well. With everything in place on my panel, I'm going to add it to the front of my card, and we're going to call this card Fun and Done. You may notice that I did a little change on the shark. I pointed him a little bit more upward and then I glued his tail to the acetate because he was creating a catch point with the mermaid. By doing this, it eliminated all of those problems. 
I'm going to end today's video by showing you all of the die sets that I used for today's card. Also wanted to let you know that they will all be linked on my blog if you care to visit me. It will be linked below. It is sandydiller.blogspot.com. I also have linked below all of the instruction videos that Karen has done for all of her die sets. Thanks once again for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed my little glimpse into my imagination when I'm cooped up at home. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave me a like, and I wouldn't mind at all if you want to subscribe to my channel. Just push that little red button that says subscribe at the bottom of the screen. I will be seeing you again soon, and don't forget, let your imagination run amok. It's fun. Until next time, bye-bye.